And what better a way to describe the most famous criminal couple in comics? Our first look at Todd Phillips' new Joker film, Joker Foley Ado, is here. And boy, does it look like something else. Just to kind of recap, I like the first Joker film. Actually, I'd go as far as to say that I actually really like it, but uh, there are some things that I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of. I thought it was a bit shallow at times. It's really obvious with what it's getting at, and it's kind of a film that is solely centered around Joaquin Phoenix's performance. Like, that's the thing that's going to grip you. I think Todd Phillips may have been a bit too indebted to his influences, but as what we're going to talk about a little bit later in this video, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, especially when we're looking at the trailer for Joker 2. Right off the bat, the crazy thing about this film, other than the fact that it exists, because I never really envisioned a Joker sequel happening. Like, I know the movie made a billion dollars at the box office, but still, it's it's like, what do you do? How Where do you go from there? How do you tell a Joker 2 without Batman? And, I, I mean, Todd Phillips found a way. It's crazy how the rumor going around about this movie being a musical was actually true, and they're beautifully leaning into that aesthetic. As I briefly touched on, for better or worse, in my case, for better, mostly, the Joker movies are ones that really wear their influences on their sleeve, and having the visuals of a classic Hollywood musical fill the screen, but like, Joker-fied makes for something fun and exciting, like this weird 70s pastiche crossed with La La Land, or as the internet has already dubbed it, Ha Ha Land. Which, uh, I, I... Why aren't you going with that title, Todd? Open your eyes! Director of photography Lawrence Scher continues to be the MV fucking P of these films, along with presumably Hildur Guden Adalter and her haunting music, filling the frames with striking visuals and allowing the grime and grandeur of this world to seep through the screen. The cinematography, score, and Joaquin Phoenix's unsettling performance worked in unison to carry that first Joker film all the way to the Oscars, and presumably, Warner Brothers has the confidence to believe that they can do it all again with Joker 2, and based on the trailer, there's no reason to think otherwise, seeing as I'm already more in on this wild swing for the fences take on the Clown Prince of Crime than I was in 2019. Yeah, this Joker 2 trailer looks like it's probably going to be a better film than the first one. Seeing all of that talent return, plus the addition of... <coughs> Academy Award winner Lady Gaga is guaranteed to bring about nothing short of audiovisual performance, even though that's already visual, but you know, just roll with it, euphoria. If the first film was inspired by the grotesque character studies of obsessive loners in Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy, it's clear that this sequel is going to be borrowing the sadistic dark comedy of another 70s classic, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Or should I say, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by way of Fred Astaire, which if that doesn't sound like a goddamn ball, then I don't know what to tell you. That approach, set within the padded cells of Arkham Asylum, is one deliriously inspired take on the Harley Joker story I didn't know I needed. Long live the mad mad lad Todd Phillips. Go pioneer your DC black label, buddy. While we can't tell for certain from the two and a half minutes if any other famous Batman rogues will be joining Joker and Harley Quinn's Rat Pack, the thing that's abundantly clear to any Batman fan from a mile away is that Phillips seems to be bringing to life a loose adaptation of the Mad Love story. Now, to understand the Mad Love story, we have to go back to when Harley made her debut in Batman the Animated Series. Harley was initially introduced as a henchman character for the Joker, but her design and characterization, being loosely based on her voice actress Arlene Sorkin, rest in peace, made her stand out. She was fun and zany and gave Joker his own sort of Robin. So when B-Taz was relaunched as the new Batman adventure, in 1997, they decided to finally tell the origin of Harley and the Joker. The best thing about the Joker, something that Nolan took advantage of in The Dark Knight, is that his origin is unknown. Alan Moore's comic, The Killing Joke, gave the most widely accepted version of the Joker's origin, but even in that, it's the Joker being an unreliable narrator. It could be fake, most likely is, and it's something the first Joker movie played with. The idea of what is reality and what's in Arthur's head, how Arthur's delusions affect how the audience receives them 
throughout the film. Just as Phillips played with the origin of the Joker, I'm sure he'll do the same with elements of Harley Quinn's origin, only, you know, adapting them for the world he established. She was a new psychiatrist at Arkham Asylum who basically cheated her way through school so didn't have the best qualifications. She then took on the Joker as a main patient of hers and as the Joker always does, he tricks her, he manipulates her, he makes her think that they are really connecting, that she is unraveling the layers that have driven this madman. As long as it helped the Joker get out of prison, he went along with it, but Harley truly fell madly in love with him, which led to years of being in their abusive relationship. Now, I don't think we're gonna get that toxic take on the Joker-Harley dynamic, but it's safe to say that we're going to get some sort of toxic take on their dynamic. Something that's more in line with how Arthur perceives others, as we saw in that first film. The thing about Arthur Fleck is that he doesn't really share any of the same qualities as the classic comic Joker. In his mind, all he wanted to do was be noticed, to make people laugh, to be accepted. The fact that he became a symbol of anarchy in Gotham City just sort of seems to be a side effect. He's clearly the villain, he plays the victim at times and uses violence and obsession as a reprieve, but his emergence highlights a dissatisfaction with the status quo from the citizens of Gotham. Larger societal issues surrounding poverty, mental illness, political corruption, and more. Large swathes of people look to Arthur as this symbol of change without really understanding anything about him or what he believes in. Throughout the trailer, we get glimpses of Arthur's trial of him and Harley Quinn walking up the steps to a courtroom with protest signs and free Joker signs being lifted along the peripherals. Again, the people don't even really know what Arthur stands for. He's simply an idea. I'm an idea. All Arthur cares about is the attention, however that may come to him. So to bring it back to Harley, there are a few different ways they could take her character. Through some of the clips, we get what appears to be flashbacks, although they're more likely delusions, but you know, some of which even show a Harley in protest. It's entirely possible she could have been at the Joker rally following his assassination of Murray Franklin and that her imprisonment aligned with Arthur's. She's a disciple whom Arthur's inadvertently tricked into buying into his murderous tendencies as an act of defiance instead of what they really are, which is self-serving. The beginning of the Joker-Harley relationship is so founded on how he makes her feel special too. From Harley's point of view, it feels like they see each other, and that's something I could see Arthur exploiting or interpreting the wrong way as he did many times in that first film because of how desperately he craves attention. Harley has the line in the trailer where she says, I'm nobody. I haven't done anything with my life like you have. This could mean that the two of them are building off of their psychosis, creating a world for them that they see as perfect. They complete each other, make each other feel strong, and make each other feel whole in their own twisted, toxic way. That's what they find when they have the songs blaring in their minds together. Even though they both feel like nobodies when alone, together they gain the confidence to go from Arthur Fleck and Harleen Quinzel to the Joker and Harley Quinn. There is also the possibility that she is a nurse, similar to her comic origin, and maybe she was assigned to him undercover as a means to truly uncover the mind of the Joker. This could also inadvertently lead to Harley becoming a victim of Arthur's delusions. The more time she spends with him, the more their realities become intertwined until she starts seeing the world as he does, losing her sense of self, forming one shared delusion. I mean, what better way to depict a further descent into madness than through the heightened reality of a musical? Whatever the case, I'm sure Todd Phillips has something really sneaky up his sleeve, just as he did for the first film. It's also worth noting that while I'm not entirely inclined to believe it, much of his and Harley's interactions could be, well, a hallucination. And I'd be a bit disappointed if that were the case given that they already pulled that trick with Sophie in the first film, but Phillips has set a precedent for how the actions of a Joker movie can be interpreted. Arthur is someone desperate for attention, desperate for the attention of women to have a romantic connection, so much so that he'll conjure up an entire relationship with a woman he merely shared a glance with against the behest of her. So it might not be too far-fetched to imagine a scenario in which this Harley is a more involved 
version of Sophie, a fractured image in his mind of someone who looked at him one time and Arthur created an entire person to become his partner in crime. How do you go deeper into this idea of how twisted he sees the world around him? Well, manufacturing a lover as a means for self-liberation and love sure seems like an idea worth playing with. Which would sort of lead to the final twist being that it's a full inversion of the mad love story. We could see a Harley who is in charge of the Joker. Arthur as a character doesn't have much of a spine, so it stands to reason that he could be really easily manipulated by someone. He could fall head over heels for someone who tells him that she wants to see the real him, that she loves who he is. Underneath all of it, though, could be someone searching for her own life, someone searching for the fame that Joker has gotten. The dance sequences may be Arthur's hallucinations about what is actually happening in his life, his idyllic version of his relationship with Harley, that in reality is breaking him down, maybe even turning him more into to what the idea of who the Joker is as opposed to who Arthur Fleck is. I mean, it makes sense that the filmmakers would give the Joker a taste of his own medicine. This could cause him to run away from himself as we see in the trailer. Maybe Harley shows him a life he could have if he rejects the Joker persona and embraces the Arthur one, and his tug and pull is what fuels his arc. As we touched on earlier, Gotham had a societal reaction to the Joker that Arthur wasn't necessarily in anticipating, but it gave him what he wanted, which was attention and adoration. However, how will Arthur respond when the obsession he puts onto the world is reflected back onto him? Arthur running away from himself in the trailer, or these reflections of Harley doing similar things that he did from the first film, could be him seeing through his own eyes how people view him. It could be symbolic of him running from himself, or the person he's become when he puts on the makeup, or the very thing he kickstarted when he shot Murray and incited a riot. Is that the person he wants to be? It's given him everything he wants, in Harley, notoriety, and confidence, but at the cost of everything else. He doesn't know what to do, if he should accept this reality and succumb to it or not. But I mean, the other side of the coin is always delusion, right? Did Arthur actually make an impact, or is it all in his head? He could have created an entire world for himself where he is the main character. He is a figure that people look up to, and he gets to be the reluctant hero of his own story. And maybe that's the real punchline. The Joker and Harley Quinn relationship is always a fascinating one. I think people have a tendency to oversimplify it into just a toxic relationship, which it is, but there's a spectrum of how you can cover that toxic relationship. There are different ways in which people are toxic in a relationship, and I think it'll be cool to see Todd Phillips do something different from what we've already seen and what is already the most obvious way to do the Joker-Harley Quinn toxic relationship in you know, Suicide Squad, Birds of Prey, all the stuff that we've seen from the DCEU. It looks like this one's gonna have a bit more thought put into it instead of just like a direct translation from the animated show. And it'll probably explore the more subtle, nefarious ways that Arthur Fleck is a manipulator. The concept of making it a musical is also exciting. I mean, some of the shots look like they're going to be full on stages embracing the artifice of stuff like, you know, Francis Ford Coppola's One from the Heart, which is great, and a lot of other classic Hollywood musicals. There's no doubt that they all had an influence on Todd Phillips during the making of this film. Foley Ado looks like it's going to be bold. It's the kind of weird, inspired filmmaking I crave from the comic book genre. I mean, who knows if we're going to cap the series at two or if we're going to get a third Joker movie about him finally meeting Batman. It remains to be seen, but the chronology of this world is insane, and it doesn't really matter because these look like two movies that could stand on their own, and there's something clearly interesting that Todd Phillips is working with. He has a clear vision for it all. And quite frankly, I'm just excited to see what Joker 2 has in store for us. Who knows? Maybe it'll put a smile on our faces. I mean, probably not.